A pleasant day everyone to all the 21st century educators. Welcome to the national training dealing with innovative teaching across disciplines. It was highlighted from the past several decades that there is a consensus that in many places around the world, science education is facing serious challenges. One of the challenges encountered by science education is the inadequacy in terms of different sources like in the field of instructional materials and challenges related to finances. Some of the sectors in the government do not appreciate the relevance of science education in order to promote the enhancement of economy as well as the future well-being. Also, it indicates that many countries face greater challenges in the field of science education. One of the challenges encountered by science education among several nations are as follows. Absence or deficiency in the number of science teachers who are highly skilled. Number two, absence or inadequacy in terms of learning materials. Third, absence of community-based science centers, lack of technology, as well as the implementation of traditional method of teaching, which is said to be teacher-centered learning competencies. So, in other words, in order to attain or reach globally competitive learners, science has been the keystone to quality education. Okay? And in order to achieve this quality education using science concepts, we need to foster the following. It must be minds-on and hands-on activities so that it can be applied in real-life scenarios. Moreover, in order to achieve scientific concepts and literacy, we need to apply the so-called science process skills that includes observing, second, comparing, classifying, measuring, inferring, predicting, controlling variables, and interpreting data. These science process skills promotes the so-called higher order thinking skills so that we can achieve the desirable goal about the benefits that will be obtained from science education. Moreover, we need to say goodbye to the use of rote learning that is memorization of scientific facts. Instead, we need to foster real-life application in the field of science teaching so that abstract concepts must be addressed. In order to address abstract concepts in science, those concepts that cannot be visualized in our naked eyes like atoms and cells, we need to use localized materials that can be found in our community like for instance, the use of localized plants and the use of recyclable materials can be used in order to concretize those abstract concepts in the field of science. Okay, So, moreover, it only means that in science teaching, science concepts must be strongly connected to real-world situations so that it will be relevant and it can be understood fully by the 21st century learners. So, this connection of real-life application to scientific concepts will be known as contextualization. So again, welcome to our NAYAP and CPD accredited virtual program. This is Dr. Russell C. Soltura, Master Teacher 2 of Senior High School at Quezon National High School. So, in this idea, Let's now figure out the different objectives of our session. Recall once more that contextualization is connecting real-life application in teaching scientific concepts. Thus, our first session objective is to explain the concept of contextualization and you will learn that there are two main levels of contextualization. These are localization and indigenization. Next, identify the legal basis for the Department of Education that promotes the concept of contextualization. Discuss the different learning theories that deals with the theoretical 
framework of contextualization so that we can see how it works well. And finally, explain the process of contextualization in science teaching. So, for the following contents, we have the following. The overview of contextualization, the legal basis, the theoretical framework, as well as the process of contextualization in science teaching. These contents are connected to our session objectives. Without any further ado, let's have the first idea dealing with the general overview about contextualization. So contextualization can be defined as relating, denoted by this double-headed arrow, relating what? Relating the curriculum of science to the natural setting, to the real-life situation, and real-life application of science concepts based from the experiences of our 21st century learners. Once you connect these two components, namely curriculum, setting, situation, and application, this will be known as contextualization, something that is visible in real-life scenarios. Once we connect the curriculum along with the natural setting, situation, and application of the different concepts among the everyday lives of our 21st century learners, this will produce a relevant curriculum. Relevant meaning to say it is significant and important. Second, meaningful because it is based from the real-life experiences of our learners. And then the third one, it is useful, meaning to say it can be applied in order to solve existing problems within the community. So this is known as contextualization in science teaching. And did you know that contextualization consists of two main degrees or levels known as localization and indigenization? So for the succeeding slide presentation, let's try to figure out the difference between the two by providing specific examples using scientific concepts. For instance, let's have the concept of localization. Under localization, we try to connect or relate the learning content in science together with the local information or localized materials within the community of our learners. Once you connect the learning content in science to the local information and materials that can be found within the community of the learners, it is known as localization. Let me give you an example. For instance, our learning content in science is methods of separating mixture that can be found within the curriculum of grade 6 and grade 11. So the main highlight there is how will we relate the local information or let's say local materials within the learner's community to the learning content dealing with methods of separating mixture. All we have to do is to use green pigments for instance to obtain or let's say green pigments obtained from the leaves of localized plants. Take note, these localized plants can be found within the community of the learners. And we will use the green pigments obtained from those leaves so that we can perform the methods of separating mixture. That is, we will try to separate the green pigment derived from localized plants through the use of paper chromatography, one of the methods of separating mixture. So that is localization. We use localized materials okay, that can be found within the community of our learners. Furthermore, let's say our topic deals with one of the main contents for grade 9 science, diseases of respiratory and circulatory system. So our localized version will be, this will be the probable activity, coordinate with local barangay officials for information dissemination to prevent diseases through poster making. So notice that the activity of the topic diseases about respiratory and circulatory system was localized because we will use the local barangay as the main setting in which the main objective is to prevent the diseases related to these organ systems through the use of poster making. Notice that there is an application of local setting that can be found within the community of our learners. So this is known as localization, application of local information and materials in order to utilize, in order to accomplish scientific learning contents. 
So, in the next presentation, let's try to discuss what is indigenization. For indigenization, it means enhancing, denoted by arrow up. Okay? The movement of that arrow is moving upward. It signifies enhancing. Enhancing what? Enhancing the following. Enhancing the curriculum, its components, enhancing the educational resources, as well as the pedagogy by relating to the biogeographical, historical, and sociocultural context of learners' community. Denoted by the double-headed arrow, it means that we will connect these two components to produce indigenization, the use of sociocultural context of learners' community. Okay? For example, the topic in grade 11 is anaerobic respiration, a type of respiration in which it uses abscess of oxygen. And one of the examples of anaerobic respiration is fermentation. Fermentation is the process of wine making. So, using the cultural context, this will be the possible uh, performance task of the learners. Community cultural practices that involves wine making using rice grains. Notice that the use of rice grains that can be found in their cultural context or community was used in order to produce wine, which is synonymous to the concept of anaerobic repress or respiration. Okay? So that is the end of our general overview for indigenization and localization. Okay? So in the continuation, let's now talk about the legal basis. So what are the legal basis of contextualization? The first legal basis is that we have the so-called Enhanced Basic Education Act of 2013, also known as the Republic Act of 10533. According to this legal basis, the curriculum of K-12 basic education curriculum must be contextualized. It must be flexible, okay, so that we can enhance the curriculum. In other words, we can enhance its degree by promoting contextualization, okay? So that is the first basis. Another legal basis is the Debt and Order Number 21, Series of 2019, dealing with the policy guidelines of the K-12 basic education curriculum. According to this policy guideline, the curriculum of K-12 basic education curriculum must be culture sensitive, it must be culture responsive, and it must be contextualized. So these are the legal basis for the implementation of contextualization. To achieve flexibility, we need to achieve contextualization so that we can enhance further the curriculum content not only in sciences but of course across disciplines. Okay? So Aside from the legal basis, let's talk about the different learning theories where we can find the concept of contextualization. So what are the learning theories or let's say the theoretical framework behind the application? Why is it that we need to contextualize science teaching? First, we have the so-called brain research theory. According to brain research theory, the human brain or the brain of our 21st century learners can be stimulated once we connect the new knowledge to their prior existing knowledge so that we can achieve greater concepts in com when it comes to knowledge acquisition. Second is known as collaborative learning theory. According to this theory, all we have to do is to perform such activities that must be a collaboration or it must be within the social context. Learners can be enhanced through knowledge acquisition if it is within the social context. Next is constructivism. According to John Dewey, the activities for contextualization must be hands-on learning in which it must have connection to the prior existing knowledge or schema through real-world scenarios, through real-life application, okay? Hands-on activities will produce new construct or new knowledge, and this new knowledge can be applied to a new context. So that is constructivism. 
The next one is progressivism and cognitism. According to these two philosophical beliefs in education, progressivism and cognitivism means that students can acquire new knowledge or more knowledge if they are active in the teaching learning process. The question is how they will achieve such, uh, let's say, being active inside the classroom setting by providing real-life scenarios because once they have real-life scenarios, we visualize that there are real scenarios related to the scientific concepts. They will produce, let's say, motivation. And once they are motivated because the scientific concepts are related to their everyday lives, they will become more active in relation to cognitivism and progressivism. The next theoretical framework as basis for contextualization is community-based learning. It means that the performance task in science teaching must be related to current issues and current concerns that occur within the community. It must be related to those current issues and current concerns, more specifically those problems encountered nowadays by our community. And once it is connected to community, they can understand the real-life application of the scientific concepts in a broader sense. Another one is social cognition theory. According to social cognition theory, learners acquire new sets of knowledge through their culture where they really belong. Okay? Like languages as well as other components of culture like their interaction with their parents, with their friends. And this is also synonymous to situated learning theory. That is, we can learn from our society, from the real-life scenarios faced by our community. So these are the theoretical frameworks behind the application of contextualization. And finally, for the last part of our ideas here in our session, contextualization process in science teaching can be achieved through the use of an acronym. The acronym is REACT. R stands for relating, E experiencing, A applying, C cooperating, and T transferring. For relating, all we have to do is to link the concept to be learned with something that learners already know okay again connecting the new concept to be learned with something the learners already know so for instance the concept that was already learned or new among the learners is the occurrence of fireworks display we know very well that our learners are very familiar with the concept about fireworks display so did you know that the fireworks display can occur because once the elements or let's say metals in the periodic table were heated they will produce certain amount of energy in a form of wavelength that corresponds to different colors so from this we can deduce that learners can realize that fireworks display can occur once you heat metals because elements have the ability to release energy in a form of wavelength and each wavelength corresponds to colored lights. So this is the concept of relating. Okay, before you deal with the study of atomic spectra, dealing with atomic models, like for instance the atomic model of Niels Bohr under chemistry, so we can relate it to the occurrence of fireworks display because Bohr's model, atomic model, also known as a planetary model, can explain why elements emit certain amounts of energy in a form of wavelengths with corresponding light. So that is the idea. The occurrence of fireworks display are possible because of the presence of metals or elements that release high amount of energy in a form of colored lights. The next one is letter E, experiencing. It deals with hands-on activities in which the teacher's explanation allow learners to discover new knowledge. Okay, For instance, the concept is incomplete dominance. 
hands-on activities. Okay? According to genetics and biology, there are some traits that can be acquired through blending. So therefore, the teacher here facilitated an artwork activity in which they use red paint and white paint. Once the two colored paints combine together, red plus white will produce pink. Therefore, it's a hands-on activities that is related to the concept of genetics. That once the traits of maternal and paternal sites combine together, they will blend, producing a third phenotype. That is, red flower crossed with white flowers will produce pink flowers. And we provide an activity which is a hands-on activity using watercolored materials. So, it is an example of experiencing. Okay? Another strategy for you to apply contextualization in science teaching is applying. Learners apply their knowledge to the real-world situation. So, for instance, the concept is diffusion. That is the movement of substances from higher concentration to lower concentration. For instance, the substance here is salt. Notice that on the left side of this container, we have high amounts of salt and it moves towards the eggs. Okay? Therefore, the movement of salt particles is from higher concentration to lower concentration known as diffusion, producing salted eggs. So that is an example of applying. You apply the concept of diffusion to produce salted eggs okay and then another example is cooperating learners solve problems as a team to reinforce and develop collaborative skills so notice in our example we apply collaborative work it's a team work in which two heads are better than one and they share common goal and that is to explain the concept of incomplete dominance by blending two different colors so it is a collaborative approach in addition to that the last one is transferring that is learners take what they have learned and apply it to new situations and contexts so this is known as the react strategy one of the best ways to contextualize science teaching okay so for instance Another example of transferring is the concept of osmosis. According to osmosis, water moves from higher concentration to lower concentration. If we put some salt, okay, for this species of fish products, the water inside the fish will be released outside. Therefore, the water will move outside the fish because of too much salt. Remember that in osmosis, the water moves from higher concentration to lower concentration. And as a result, we have the formation of dried fishes. So that is the application of osmosis. Okay? So keep in mind that contextualization can be done in all branches of sciences. Aside from sciences, it can be applied across disciplines like mathematics, English, MAPE, TLE, ESP, and Filipino subjects. Moreover, localization maximizes the use of available materials. For instance, the concept is you want to differentiate elements from compounds. So for instance, we can use graphite to represent element carbon and we will use sugar to represent compound. So this is one of the competencies prescribed in grade 7 and grade 12 sciences for STEM students. Another one, the use of mud and distilled water to differentiate pure substance and mixture. Notice that all of these materials can be found in their respective homes, community as well. So make sure that it must be authentic materials. And then next one is to contextualize anchor teaching on the learner's lives. So again, according to osmosis, once we apply osmosis, the movement of water is from higher concentration to lower concentration. It will move outside. The water will move outside the cell if we have more salts. Therefore, it will be known as hypertonic solution. If the water was released outside, the cell will be dehydrated. Therefore, the bacterial cell that can cause infection in your wound 
will be dehydrated and eventually it will die. That's why every time that we have open wounds due to some injuries or surgeries, some of our learners will take a bath along the seashore because the seawater is rich in salt. And once the wound is exposed to seawater, mind you, the water outside the bacterial cell will move outside because it is a hypertonic solution. Therefore, the wounds will be cured. So this is an example of application of contextualization in science teaching in the everyday lives of our students. And we need to pose problems or issues faced by our community and apply strategies for solution. And the best example of this is the application of science investigatory project. For instance, the problem faced by the community is the occurrence of urinary tract infection or UTI. And the possible solution that can be used through localization is the use of makahiya leaves. Makahiya can be found everywhere. And it was found out that makahiya contains flavonoids and saponins in order to kill those bacteria that can cause urinary tract infection like Escherichia coli. So notice that it is an example of science investigatory project. We provide solution to the existing problem. Okay? In addition to that, in consonance to the education policy frameworks for indigenous people or IPs, we should adopt teaching strategies that will respect their history, language, customs, traditions, and their cultural heritage. And for us to apply that notion, okay, all we have to do is to integrate the so-called indigenous knowledge systems and practices, also known as IKSPs. These are local knowledge developed over centuries of experimentation and are passed orally from generations to generation. It was found to be an important catalyst to sustainable development due to their direct connection to resource management and conservation according to Donato and Kinomis of 2016. And to give you some application, to give you some tips how to apply IKSP, this will be the examples. For integrated science, the topics are measurements and fermentation. So what will be the application of indigenous knowledge system and practices? For instance, if your topic is measurement, you can use traditional ways of measuring to be embedded in your lesson plan. For fermentation, the IKSP is preparing native wines and beverages. For biology, classification of living organisms, our IKSP will be naming and characterization of trees, shrubs, and other plants found within the local community, as well as naming and characterization of birds and other animals that can be found on air, land, and water. And then, if your topic is about health, the use of herbal and botanical plants and insects as medicine, in which these localized materials or localized plants can be found within the community. For the topic chemistry, for example, our topic will be methods of separating mixtures and classifications of matter. We can use preparing native wines or beverages because wines are examples of mixtures. For measurement, traditional measuring in making indigenous or native recipes, as well as the use of herbal, botanical plants, and insects for medicine. And for physics, the topic is measurement, traditional ways of measuring, and then for sounds, the use of sounds produced by natural resources like water, birds, and other forms of sounds that can be heard within their local community. And let me present to you an example of lesson exemplar with the integration of contextualization. So for instance, okay, our content standard is to demonstrate understanding about the different methods of separating mixture. Okay? And our most essential learning competency is describe various simple techniques such as distillation and chromatography. Notice that in letter D, we highlighted the so-called community competency in which we try to modify it. We try to contextualize it or let's say indigenize. Okay? Define the different methods in separating mixtures in preparation of native wines and medicines using herbal and botanical plants within the local community. Notice that we incorporate indigenization and localization. And then for the activity, what's new? The students will answer the following activity. 
the learners will perform an activity to simulate four physical methods of separating mixtures like decantation, filtration, scooping, and evaporation used in preparing native wines or beverages and medicine derived from herbal and botanical plants. They will use traditional methods in measuring the ingredients for making the said products. Also, they will perform flotation or scooping used by mining industry. Notice, it is localized. In extracting useful metals from their ores, it also includes separation of mixture using paper chromatography and dyeing. Note that indigenization by recognizing the community as the wider space, environment, and they act as the resource for learning. So that is localization and contextualization. Moreover, for assessment part, this form of assessment deals with the different situations in which different methods of separating mixture can be applied in making indigenous products within the local community like wines and medicines. Another activity is that the students will classify mixtures as either homogeneous or heterogeneous that can be found in their kitchen. It may also include some examples of indigenous materials that can be found within the community. So notice it is based from real-life experiences. Authentic materials must be used. Also, it includes the procedure on how to make indigenous products using the said methods of separating mixture. So, for the latter part of the lesson plan, learners can list as many different ways as they can think to separate mixtures that can be found in their local community. Okay, In presenting their output, they will create a narrative report using their own language. Notice? the use of their own language, culture-based, okay, and culture-sensitive, which shows how they conducted the activity. Integrative teaching of subject towards 21st century skills so that they can relate to IKSPs and its element, that is, technologies and practices and relevant to the learner's culture, okay? So they can relate the learned concepts to their personal lives as well as within their local community. And they will reflect at the end by writing what they have learned and realization that they acquired the new insights by expressing it through their own language. So this is just a simple example of integration of localization, contextualization, and indigenization in preparing lesson exemplar for science teaching. And for that, thank you very much for your active participation. I do hope that you learn a lot from these concepts because contextualization indeed plays a crucial role to enhance scientific knowledge as well as literacy. Thank you.